Hello everyone, how's it going? So today we're going to look into self-driving object detection using YOLO V5 custom object detection. So we have this sort of a data set and it's coming from this roboflow.com and if you go into the bottom portion of this website, it's right here. You can see this Udacity self-driving car data set. So this is basically a set of images that has all the images of the roads, where cars are visible, traffic lights, trucks, and the pedestrians walking on it. So all those images have already been taken down. So you can see that it's able to, it has bounding boxes showing where the traffic lights are, where pedestrians are, uh, even people walking on the side path. So everything has been already created in the form of a bounding box for us. So we can basically use this data set and use these annotations for these bounding boxes to train our data set. So let's come back to, so you can see that it's the different types of classes available in this particular data set is already shown here. And this has about 15,000 images in it. We are not gonna be using 15,000 images to test this out. To, um, even with GPU, it takes a very long time. I, I left it for four or five hours and it did not, it, it was still losing my patience on that. So I reduced it down to 1500 only, and it took me about 20 minutes to run this data set. So coming down uh, in the description, you'll find this link to the Colab file. Just go ahead and click the link, uh, sign in with your own account so that you can open it, and then come down to runtime and change runtime type and make sure you have it under GPU. So you can, of course, run it through CPU as well. Then this program will run properly without any issues. And of course, you can run it on your own computer as well. But with CPU, it is very, very slow. But now, look, let's come back. We have it under GPU. So the first step is to download the YOLO v5 dependencies, all the requirements that we need, and everything is already installed, you know, downloaded, and then we are installing all the requirements needed by the YOLO v5, the basic requirements. So once that is done, we need the data set, this data set, which is right here. So come here, and uh, I, I think I used the fixed large, and if I open on this, and if you have another download section, uh, so I uh, I was using the YOLO V5 PyTorch version. So you have the TXT right here. The YOLO V5 PyTorch version is what we need. And this is basically, the reason it's change, showing that it's gonna be a YAML file is, this file will help YOLO V5 understand what the classes is all about, what the data set is all about, where the annotations are. And once you have the show download code, press continue and it will give you a link and copy that link and come back here. Oh, let me close this. And you can paste this link over right over here in this section. So if you press on this, so it will take, uh, it will download all the files for us and it will take care of everything and it will paste it here. So coming down to this portion, here it's all downloading all and extracting all the files that we need from our repository and putting it down here. Now, once we have all the images, once we have the folders from the Udacity website, now we need to do a little bit of processing. Let me show you what, what this processing is all about. It looks like the runtime was, okay, so we have it up and running now. So when you get this information, when you get the Udacity data set, it's all saved under this export folder this export folder and uh, all these folders you, if you see the test train validation the, all these three folders were not initially available it was only the export folder and under the export folder you had the images and their corresponding annotations which are saved as a labels file so the, it, that's how you originally get the data set but this yolo v5 is configured to have a training data set a validation data set and later on towards the end it also needs the testing data set so that's how it's designed and for that purpose we're going to do some pre-processing we first create all these folders that we need we create the training folder the validation folder and their corresponding images and labels and of course the testing folder as well so we first create all these folders and we run this script this whole script and this script i basically wrote down 
so that I can copy some images from the export folder and then copy them into the test train validation. So basically what you're doing is if between training and test, you're dividing the data set between 80% and 20%. So if you have a data set of 15 of 1000 maybe, you're using 80% which is 800 in, in training and then 20% which is 200 in testing. So that's how you have broken down the data set. And for validation, you're again breaking down the training data set. So if you have 800, you're, you just, you're gonna be using 80% of 800 into the validation data set. And the, oh sorry, the 20% of the data set will under validation and the rest 80% will be in the training data set. So that's how it's gonna be divided down. And we're just going to be using that principle to divide our original data set, which is under the export images folder, to these three folders, which is the train images, validation images, and test images. And we're also going to be uh, taking the exact same labels into and transferring it into the labels file as well so you can see that uh, from the 15,000 images that we had we're using only 959 in training 239 for validation and 300 for testing so th this is our breakdown basically and uh, uh, these are all the images that we are going to be using now coming down here we are opening the data.yaml file and this is the data.yaml file this file comes from the roboflow and this file is nothing but describing the data set for us for yolo v5 it gives out the information of where the training data set is where the validation data set is and it also gives out information of all the classes that are available so it has about 11 classes showing bike car pedestrian traffic lights and all the other data set, um, classes that are available are present in this file. So now, once we have that, we create our own custom configuration, so a model configuration. So the, if you open the YOLO v5 s.yaml file, and this is available in the YOLO v5 folder, it is nothing but the parameters file. It's a configuration file for the network, showing that what kind of a network you're using, what is the different types of uh, neural networks that are involved, all the convolution networks that are all involved. It is just describing what the default is. But for our purpose, we will be creating our own custom via YOLO v5s configuration file and this is the configuration that we will be using and we don't need to worry about it right now it's not too much of a difference it's just describing the different types of neural networks that are going to be used and uh, we're just using it at, as it is no, nothing too much to worry about you, do, you can just copy this and in fact not just for this data set if you use it for other data sets as well it will probably run very fine and if there is always a dis distance then we can come back and tweak this but so far i've tested this on about four or five data sets the same configuration file and it seems to be running perfectly fine so nothing to worry about now once you have this thing done the last step is to train the data set now training this is the most important step where we are supplying information to the training.py file and we are letting the file know that it's going to be a set of images and uh, all the information about the images is under the data.yaml file the configuration file is under the custom yolo v5s.yaml file and we are now in interested in all the weights that you are going to generate for us so it'll take up about a few minutes and this is the most lengthy part of the program and that is the sole reason I've already run this application before I started making this video. It took me about 18 minutes, uh, close to 20 minutes basically, and it ran through 100 epochs, so 100 variations, and it took all the information, it, uh, it, it went through all the files and then created this weights folder and this weights folder is present here. On this particular line so you can see it runs expo results weights best dot pt and if you want you can always download this file it will be available under the yolo v5 runs folder if you open runs and if you open yolo v5 results it will be under the weights 
folder right here, the best PT. So this is a weights file and you can always download this weights file and for any future references that you want to run this application, you can instead of using, instead of running, training everything, and then uh, you can simply use that weights file in the next part we'll show and uh, run it directly without training it. So that, that's something to note. Now, coming down to the next portion, once the training and everything is done, once the data set, once all the legwork, the hard work for training and everything for the data set is already done, then the next portion is to test out, test how our application is going to run. So in this case, we are testing it on all the test images, and this is nothing but the images, and we're letting the function know that the runs file the weights file is under this folder the same runs folder that we show that we saw in the previous section and we are so informing that the source or the images that you're going to be running it's under the test images folder and it's and this is the right this is the one over here that we created ourselves and it's under the test images folder right in this section so it's going to run through all these images. There are about 300 images like we saw earlier, 302 images. And it's going to run through all these 302 images for us and then do the testing and you know find the annotations of it. Once everything is done, it will display the output here using this particular command. And for that purpose, we're using IPython display, image display, and it will go through all the images that are available in the output and then display it for us. So you can see that the output is being displayed right here in the browser. And if you need to download these images, you can always right click and then save the image and download the image in your file. So it's, it's as simple as that. Now coming down to the fun part. So how do you do for videos? So videos is very simple. So how you do is coming coming down to the main folder. So you're out of everything. You're on the main root directory. Come here and click on this. It'll ask you to upload the files that you're interested in and whatever file you are interested in, just click on that and, and upload it. And you can see I have uploaded these three videos right here. So video, video.2. So once you have these videos done, go to the last section the last bit of the code. Once you have all these images displayed, everything is done. This is the last portion where uh, where we have all the videos present. So here, instead of providing the source as a set of images, we are saying that the, v the source is gonna be a video in this case. And this video is the video 3.mp4. So that's about it. It's as simple as that. Just run and make sure you're running it and it'll go through all the frames in the image. It'll go through everything and then just display the output for us. So that's about it. It's as simple as that. With that, we come to the conclusion. I hope this video helped you. And if you're interested in something more like this, let me know what are the different projects that you are interested in, what you would like me to work on next. So with that, you guys take care, stay safe, bye-bye.